Hey, hey, fellow YouTubers, JJ the Trucker coming to you from Central Texas. Boy, that view sucks, doesn't it? Yeah, clearly, um, I got a new uh, a new mount um, for for Christmas, and I, I didn't set it up right. So hold hold on. Hey, everybody, <laughs> is that better? There we go. I think that one. I think that's a little better. Whew. All right. So yeah, sorry you won't get the view today. You just have to look at this. Sorry about that. Uh, but this is going to be one of those videos you can go ahead and just, you know, you don't have to watch it. You can just listen. And so, that means you can be listening to it while you're driving. You can even save it for later. After you watch the whole, you know, or listen to the whole thing first. Then save it for later to listen to it again. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So, man, it has been, it's been a while. It has, uh, it's been a while. And I'm sorry about that. I've had a lot going on. I've got a lot to catch you guys up on. And, uh, whew, man. So, I, in fact, I'm even going to make this a two-part video. That much to catch you guys up on. I've been busy. I've needed a break from YouTube. You know, not, not a break from you guys. You guys have been awesome. But I definitely needed a break from YouTube. Uh, it just, you know, it, it's a, it's a lot, it takes a lot of time. You know, to, to do these videos and, uh, you know, to, the, the whole the whole thing. And I just have not really had it lately. And uh, once I fill you in on what's been going on, you guys will understand why. So, let's get right to it, shall we? Um, look, trucking, it's not just a job. You know, when you're OTR like this, uh, over the road, it's the long haul stuff. It's not just a job. It is a lifestyle and it can be challenging. It can be challenging. Not impossible, not terribly bad, nothing like that. Just challenging. And you gotta be able to overcome those challenges. Oh, I've got a truck merging onto the highway here. Slow down for them. Give me a moment. two-lane highway uh, in between Houston and Austin, uh, Houston and San Antonio on uh, on the 10. It's not a little two-lane highway, but it is two lanes right now. Uh, two lanes each direction. So, uh, anyway. Man, home of the construction zones. Whew. Texas is not kidding when it comes to construction right now. Uh, I think more of the highways under construction than not. Um, which isn't just Texas right now. Hold on. Yeah, not just Texas, but especially Texas. Uh, so, anyways, yeah, it, it's challenging, and you gotta you gotta learn to overcome those challenges. And you know, I've been doing this for a few years now, and been with Landstar for uh, coming up on six months, and it's still challenging. You know, still I'm still learning, still learning to overcome those challenges and everything. And, uh, and we're gonna get into some of those challenges, but it's also rewarding. It is very very rewarding, uh, mostly in the form of right there the money it's all about the money baby mm. get out of my way I'm gonna get paid y'all gonna get paid y'all just give me that moo la 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 that's right and that's my uh, song quote of the week if you know this song quote of the week chances are you did not know any of the other song quotes of the week and vice versa oh boy more slow traffic coming up here um so yeah, this one's, uh, I give you a little hint, it's not a rock song, <laughs> not a classic rock like, like most of my others are. Uh, so yeah, if you know that one, you know, throw it in the comments, let me know. Uh, so let's go over some of the challenges here and what, uh, what I've been doing uh, to overcome those. So uh, let's see, last I left you guys, I think I was heading to or trying to make my way to California for the holidays. Hopefully you can hear that. My phone's squawking at me, of course. I didn't shut the, the GPS part off. Um, so I was trying to make it home for the Christmas holidays. Uh, not quite home. We were actually having our uh, family Christmas in Havasu, uh, Havasu, Arizona, which is uh, on the border of Arizona and California. Uh, it uh, on, Right off the 40. Um, and then 
from there going into Southern California to have Christmas with the rest of the family. So kind of a two-parter. And then after that, going to my grandmother's to have Christmas, or not really Christmas, but to visit her while I'm down there in Southern California. Um, so as I've mentioned before, and I'll mention it again, if you are a world seeker when it comes to OTR, meaning you know you don't care where you go after your stop, like let's say I'm delivering to uh, San Antonio, I get to San Antonio, I make my delivery, and I don't care where I pick up my next load. Hey, everything is great. There are choices. There's plenty available. Uh, the money's great, and and everything's fine, right? But if you got to get to a specific place and it's not a major hub like Atlanta, for example, uh, yeah, good luck. It, it, there's a challenge right there trying to get back home. Now, interestingly, everybody was you know complaining with Prime or you know complaining to me about Prime. Well, uh, you know, I want to get home time and I want to get home when I want to get home. Well, I never had an issue with Prime and getting home. I really didn't. Um, Anytime I requested home time, they would get me home uh, within within a day or two. It was uh, it worked out quite well. Uh, with with this, it's whew, it, working off the load boards, and I'm sure it's this way with the public load boards too. Not just the Landstar thing, but it is challenging. <clears throat> Add on to it the uh, Landstar agents to deal with. It can be even more challenging. All right, I want to try and get around this uh, slower guy here. Give me a moment. All right. Cool. Um, so Southern California in particular, there's not a lot of lanes going to Southern California, at least not in the Landstar world. Um, there's a lot of stuff, and I'm talking regular stuff, not, you know, last minute, every once in a while kind of stuff. So Reno uh, goes to Southern California quite a bit. Uh, El Paso and Laredo, and Brownsville. Uh, Brownsville, if you don't know where that's at, it's uh, south of Laredo. It's the very, very, very southern tip of Texas, right before you hit the Gulf. Um, so those areas right there are really the uh, the the main areas to, that I need to get to in order to get to Southern California. Now getting to Reno can be challenging. Um, and not a lot of stuff going to Reno. Getting to El Paso, very challenging. Hardly anything regular going to El Paso, or nothing regular going to El Paso. Um, and not a lot of stuff in general going to El Paso. Um, Laredo, not too bad. Uh, Brownsville, nothing going to two Brownsville, really. So generally it's Laredo. Um, and for Thanksgiving, I had found a load coming out of Brownsville. So I um, deadheaded down to Brownsville, got a load. It was a great load, um, fantastic. The agent was WMD. Now remember that code, UBCOs, WMD, like weapons of mass destruction. Okay, <clears throat> here we are. We're talking about WMDs and how we know about the WMDs, right? It's for sure. Everything's great. We know about WMDs. So let let's go for it. Let's. You know, I'm not. Y'all get the reference. So. Um, but then with this load, I picked it up. It was a no-contact uh, drop and hook at a uh, in a parking lot, basically. And then you go and you make your uh, delivery in Ontario, California. It's a drop and hook, 24/7, and um, and I was even able to drop the trailer, bobtail out, spend time in California, and come back and pick a trailer up, an empty trailer up, uh, anytime I wanted to, which was really convenient. And this was a, this is a regular uh, regular load that goes uh, goes from A to B. So I'm like, I'll just do that again. So I, I find my way down to Brownsville, which took three loads to go from one place to another to get to another to get to Laredo, which is where I ended up uh, delivering. Dead heading down to Brownsville. So this whole time, first of all, this this agent WMD, uh, he doesn't communicate by phone. It's text only. Um, which is fine as long as he's communicating. I don't care. Text is fine. You want it? I don't care. 
So um, when I wanted to grab one of these other loads, I texted him. He goes, all right, sounds great. Let me go ahead and uh, I'll, I'll get you booked. Cool. I've already got experience with him. Everything's fine, right? So I'm trying to get over again, so bear with me. And of course, typical fashion, everybody's like, oh, truck wants to get over? Nope, I'm going to ignore that blinker. Come on, people. Somebody's letting me over. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so I, I know that I've got this load booked. Everything's good. I booked the other loads. Everything's good. Okay. The, the loads are available. Uh, they're all direct shippers. And so everything's fine. Boom, boom, boom. Now, here it is. Okay, and this is taking a, about a week and a half to do all this, this messing around. And here it is now. I'm getting, I'm like, it's the day I'm going to be delivering in Laredo. And, I'm, and I've already texted the guy twice saying, hey, you know, I don't see that this load's been assigned to me. Everything good? And he's replied back, yeah, everything's fine. Just I'm waiting on a, on a particular number from blah, 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 blah. I'm like, okay, not a big deal. Didn't think anything of it. Figured we're good. Now it's the morning of, and I'm making the delivery in Laredo, Laredo, getting ready to deadhead down, and I'm I'm texting this guy again. Hey, I still haven't been assigned to this load. Still haven't received a Raycon. Are we okay? And he goes, Yeah, yeah, I've got three loads coming out of there every day. Um, I'm just again waiting for a response from from somebody for this number. Sorry, I dropped the ball. My bad. But yeah, everything's good. All right, cool. I make the delivery dead head down to uh to brownsville about two and a half hours and i get there i'm like all right i'm here you know what's what's the deal i go into the uh, and and now i i i didn't get a response so i go into that that parking area where the trailers are supposed to be i'm like well let me see what trailers are there you know what, what's going on maybe i can just find my paperwork and you know, whatever. I get there, and there are six other Landstar drivers sitting there waiting. Just waiting. Hold on, I gotta get over here. And they're in the same exact situation I'm in. And now they're ghosting him. Or uh, now, no, he's ghosting them. And now he's ghosting me. Now that he knows I'm there, that's it. No communication whatsoever. Completely dried up. And there's no trailers. There's no trailers. One guy had been waiting for two and a half days. Um, the others had been waiting ever, you know, different time frames since then. Um, and there's just been no trailers coming across or, or no communication, no nothing at all. I'm like, are you kidding me? Oh, come on. You know, here we are. It's almost time for, the, for Christmas. We're all wanting to go home or, or whatever. So I'm texting this guy, calling him, texting him, calling him. Nothing. And all these other people are going, yeah, we've even called Landstar Customer Service and, and complained about him and nothing. So I call Customer Service, too. I'm like, what is going on here with this guy? And they go, well, we get complaints about this guy all the time. I'm like, what do you mean you get complaints? <laughs> okay, <laughs> and? and? They're like, yeah. And I'm like, so... Have you, you know, get a hold of him, find out what's going on because he's ghosting us. It's like, yeah, the, he doesn't ever answer his phone calls, he, ne he never responds to us. Like, ne like, never ever. They go, yeah, never ever. I'm like, and you guys have been getting a lot of complaints. He, they go, yeah, it's, it's a pretty regular thing. I'm like, well, what are you guys, what is Landstar doing about it? Well, that, that decision's not ours here. It goes up to the higher ups and they are aware of it, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, what are they doing? Apparently, basically, the answer is they're doing nothing. This guy brings in money, occasionally. Doesn't matter about the drivers. Doesn't matter if the drivers get, you know, effed over. Doesn't matter. He brings in some money, and even a little bit of money, bring, you know, coming in, you know, is better than 
nothing better than getting rid of him, you know, and, and not having an agent to bring in any money. So, yeah, so basically we were all just effed. <laughs> and, oh, and <clears throat> Landstar said, and since you don't have a freight bill and this load, load's not assigned to you, we can't do anything. We can't get you truck order not used. We can't, we have, you have, we have no leg to stand on. We can't do anything for you. And they said, whatever you do in the future, do not head to an area or don't do anything in, until that order is assigned to you and you've got your Raycon. Said if I had had the Raycon, then I'd get truck order not used. Which, by the way, I've already dealt with truck order not used. It's like, it's 150 bucks and Landstar gets 35% of that. So it's $105 for truck order not used. Really not worth it. So I guess it wasn't a big deal anyway, but still now here I am in Brownsville, Texas. Nothing else leaving Brown, nothing else leaves Brownsville, just that load. And especially not going out to Cali. And everybody, all these other drivers are trying to get to Cali too. So we're all scouring the load boards. We're out, what are we gonna do? And, uh, and I, man, I got, I did get lucky. I got lucky. I, I set my, my alerts up. I, I set everything up and ended up finding a load that was heading out there. It was not as good as, as this load was, uh, but it was something. Um, it, it picked back up in Laredo, so I had to deadhead all the way back to Laredo. So that was a pain. But, um, but once I got it, I picked it up and made the delivery and it was fine. But uh, so anyways, this is my, my tip to all you BCOs. The WMDs, it's a false lead. It's, it's a bad lead. Don't fall for that trap like somebody else in the past did, if you all know what I mean. WMD, remember that one. Like weapons of mass destruction. It will massively disrupt your productivity if you fall for that. Uh, so yeah, avoid that guy like the freaking plague don't do it i will never use him again ever. i won't even consider it he's on my do not use list forget it so anyway um so yeah i i did end up making it to havasu uh the plans had to get a little rearranged because of all that but it worked out um had a really good christmas time with the family um you know and a good family friend of ours uh, hold on, I gotta get over again. Ooh, it's a nice Bentley. Ooh, I wish you guys did have the view. That is a nice convertible Bentley right there in front of me now. Man, it's pretty. Anyways, um, so yeah, Christmas was good there, and then went down to, um, let's see, went down to, uh, Ontario, spend, uh, Chris, uh, this was all before Christmas, by the way. So this wasn't all any of it on Christmas Day. This was like the week before, weekend before, uh, and leading to the week of. Remember, Christmas fell on a Saturday. So um, Havasu was the weekend before, and then the other one was uh, the, the day, day after, or the few days after that. Um, got an, an opportunity to get my truck inspection done because it's been 120 days. So I got my truck inspection done there at the, uh, the, the Petro in Ontario. I uh, got a tra the trailer inspected while I was down there. Uh, so yeah, really productive, and that all worked out. Um, Christmas was, you know, with the second part of the family turned out fantastic. Got everything I wanted for Christmas, so thank you, everybody. Um, and then went up to see my grandma. Um, grandma, uh, let's see, visited. So this Omicron has been spreading like wildfire. And uh, because of that, where my grandma is, she's in a, a nursing, a skilled nursing facility. It's what they call them now, a uh, nursing home. And uh, they had an outbreak in the nursing home. 12 of the residents and two of the staff uh, ended up uh, getting the Omicron variant. So they had said grandma wasn't exposed. On the complete opposite, it was from somebody who had, who had just come in, or a new resident who had been in quarantine um, or in semi-quarantine. They semi-quarantined them in the yellow zone for a couple weeks before they moved them to the green zone, which is where Grandma was. So 
as I said, she hasn't been exposed, but there's new visitation guidelines. Um, I can no longer pick her up and take her out to dinner or take her out anywhere. Um, she has to stay there. And if I want to visit, you know, I have to N95, which was already, already a requirement, plus the face shield. Um, and I have to be uh, current on the uh, on my vaccines and still have to sign saying I'm going into my own risk. <laughs> so like, all right, no problem. Everything's fine. I'll, I'll deal with that. Um, I did get permission to be able to bring in food. So I was able to bring in outside food. And once I'm in her room, I can take off the, the stuff and eat with her and everything's fine. I'm like, yeah, okay, no big deal. We'll do that. Visited her on uh, Christmas Eve. Hold on, getting over again. So Christmas Eve, um, brought in some El Pollo Loco. She loves chicken. Uh, and... Uh, we had a really good lunch. Uh, she was doing well. Everything was great. Um, Everything, yeah, it just went really well. Uh, so I was like, all right, Grandma, thank you. Know, I um, can't really stay. Can't, they, they don't want you to stay for a long time. So I was able to stay for lunch and all that stuff. And then I said, all right, I'll be back tomorrow um, for dinner. And I'll bring you dinner. On, uh, you know, can't go anywhere anyway. But there were a few places that were open that I already knew where I was going to go. So. I'm, uh, you know, it's, it's midday, I'm, you know, or uh, like mid-afternoon, and I'm starting to get ready to, uh, to go get the, the, the food and all that stuff, and I get a phone call from the nursing home. I'm like, okay, what's going on here? And they said, um, well, um, we regret to inform you that, oh, look, it's been 22 minutes on this video, so I'm going to wrap this one up here and uh, do a completely second video that's gonna be released tomorrow. So make sure you watch it, all right? <laughs> I know, cliffhanger, what did they say? And you will wanna hear what they had to say and what I've been going through since all that um, with her and with Landstar. So uh, hang in there, <laughs> hope you enjoyed this one and I will see you guys tomorrow, bye-bye.